Exalt your king of glory. Come on. 
Indiana, New York, Mississippi, Jersey, Texas, Louisiana, wherever you're at. We say blessed be the name of the King of glory, the Lord Jesus, the one and only. I love him tonight. I hope you are doing well. I hope this Thursday evening catches you with the favor and the blessing of God heavily and mightily upon your life. And uh, I'm coming to you tonight from the Longhorn State over here in Texas, my good friends in Texas. I'm going to be in and out of here for a while and just uh, finished up a great revival last night with my friends, the Scott family, Pastor Scott and his precious family and the Open House Ministry uh, Church family who always uh, greet me and treat me so well. And we had so many guests come in. People come in, told me they come in, said me and my family come, we come, got a hotel room to stay and be in revival this week. So blessed by those of you that are, are doing that. I'm always humbled by that. And uh, I, I don't think anybody in my mind would want to come uh, drive to hear me preach, but they know we touch God. They know we traffic with the presence of God. They know that we, uh, we see miracles. People have been baptized in the Holy Ghost this week. Miracles. That we are in a prophetic season that I, I want to say is unprecedented. And I, I've been in these seasons before. Uh, the giftings of God are seasonal. And uh, there'll be times that it's more intensified than other. It's like revival. You know, there's perpetual revival. You have a level that you'll maintain and stay in. But there are times that you just hit another gear. You hit another stride. And right now we're in a prophetic season with words of wisdom and words of knowledge and prophecy and the gift of faith. Uh, the revelatory realm has really been, really been active. I'm going to say for, well, since School of the Prophets, for about the last two months, things have, 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 have intensified to a degree. I'm not going to say I've never been here before. I, I've been at this level. I've probably seen it. I know of a time that it, 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 it's like a heartbeat. It jumped way up there. But this is one of the longest sustained times of just a, a great move of God that's prophetic. And, and what I'm loving about what God's doing right now is we are imparting to you. We're imparting to you. And so many people are telling me, man, I've come. I was in service with you the other night. You prayed for me, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting words from the Lord. I'm hearing more clearly. I'm reading my Bible, and it's, things are leaping off the pages, having dreams or a trance, a vision, or whatever. All of those things are important, right? So uh, I'm here in Texas. I stayed over. I stayed over tonight to do this video because I knew there was no way I could get up this morning, close revival last night. There's no way I could get up this morning, drive home, and then be prepared for tonight. So I just stayed over tonight, uh, told my wife I will be home in the morning. And uh, tomorrow night, uh, if you're in the greater Alexandria, Louisiana area, if you've never been to POA, come on, this is a good time to come. Friday night, I'll be preaching tomorrow night. We were, uh, D and, Dia and Dan Adams are prayer warriors, like the real kind, like not just people that pray. Uh, you're not a prayer warrior just because you pray, but when you intercede and you intercede for your city and your church and your pastor and other ministries, you're an intercessor, a prayer warrior. And that's what D and Dan are. And D and Dan, who are our prayer coordinators at POA, uh, asked me to come out last Friday. I was so blessed to speak to that group, and you guys filled it up. People piled in there, and and Dan told me he said, "Man, what a crowd we got! And had, we were out of room in the prayer room, so we moved it to the J. A. Mangan Center." And uh, so I, I no sooner than I posted that and said we will be at the G. A. Mangan Center, which is just adjacent to the church. Uh, Dan called me. He said, "Nope," because I just got off the phone with Pastor. And he wants us to take it into the main sanctuary at the POA. So thank you, Pastor Anthony. Man, we have the best pastor. Everybody should think their pastor is the best. We think that. We, we know that. Uh, pastor Anthony Mangan uh, suggested we just come on in the POA and bring it in. So tomorrow night, come out at 7 o'clock. We're going to be praying. Then about 7.30 or so, we're going to be praying, preaching. 
uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna speak a word to you. We're gonna shout and praise God. What we're we gonna do? We're gonna have some some good prayer meeting, prophetic word, praise and worship, and uh, just unscripted kind of church. And then we're gonna let the gifts work. I just come if you're in the surrounding area. Come if you're if you're in a distance and you're in driving distance, drive. There's hotels all over Alexandria. Come be with us. I've had people say I'd love to come and just be. Well, just come. Here's your chance. You, you know, if you can't come on Sunday because you're obligated to your home church, come be with us Friday night, tomorrow night. Get a plane ticket. Get on a helicopter. Get on a boat, a ship. Get on a sailboat. Get on a three-wheeler or a four-wheeler or a side-by-side. -side. Get on a, 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 on a hoverboard. Come, okay? Listen to this. This coming Sunday, then I mean, you think I don't love you. I stayed over to preach tonight to do this here. Been in my hotel room all day. Tomorrow night, POA. Saturday, driving back to Humble, Texas, start revival. Sunday morning through next Wednesday night with my good friend, Pastor Tommy and Karen Cole, and the people at Souls Harbor, Pentecostal Church. Woo, man, these people are on fire for God. You'll love them. So, Come out there. I'll be posting details about it. Start registering right now on Eventbrite for our second School of the Prophets, which is going to be sons and daughters are going to prophesy. This is uh, this is going to be a, a mentoring. It's going to be amazing. And what we're doing right now, if you go on Eventbrite and you register for School of the Prophets, then we will, the moderators will put you over on our Facebook page. It's called School of the Prophets. Once you're scheduled, uh, Pastor Woods told me to tell you that starting in October, we will begin in-person registration. And if you can't come, uh, you ought to just leave the donation there. But if you just got to have it back, we can refund you. But you can stay home and watch it because we're going to do it online this time. We didn't do it last time. We will this time. But listen to me and ask the people that already know that have been there. There's nothing like being there where we can lay hands on you and anoint you and give you one of those prayer handkerchiefs. I got one here somewhere. We can give you one of these uh, prayer handkerchiefs. We're going to have a couple hundred of them. We'll be get, but if you're watching online, we can't get it to you, but you'll get, you'll get some benefits. That's going to be in Leesburg, Virginia. All those details forthcoming. Go register. Go to my Facebook page. Check out uh, 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 my webpage, robinjohnsonpropheticministries.com. See all the things on there, all the books, all the infos on there, all the words from the Lord, the, the prophecy, it's all on there. And uh, the, the videos are there. They're free. Just make a donate. All we ask, if you go over and watch stuff, hey, if it blesses you, connect with our ministry. We need you right now. Doing a lot of traveling right now. I'm back and forth. And uh, here we are. I mean, doing what we do. And, and, and all of our evangelists that are out there, support them, help them. Uh, when you do it, on the level that we're doing it right now, I must tell you, it's expensive. Today, it would have been much easier just to drive back. I put myself up in a hotel room tonight. You know, I could have been home sleeping in my bed. But I stayed here to do this for you tonight. So, uh, you know, things get expensive. I could have went home and ate my own uh, bologna sandwiches. But, you know, these are the things we do for the kingdom of God. And you guys help me, and I appreciate it. Let me say a th few things to you. Let me tell you how much I love you, how much I preach every one of you. You're, 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 you're good to me when you show up to these churches and hug my neck and tell me you've been watching this. I had little ladies. I had two little sweet grandmas. I, I, I forget where they told me they even went to church, but they said I preached in their church, and they drove over here uh, to hear me preach. They were here a couple nights and uh, hug my neck. And that little lady, and she's watching tonight, I know she's watching tonight, and, and there's no way I'm going to remember her name because I had several of these. But she told me, she said, I'll be watching you Thursday night. She said, don't you stop. And listen, folks, this is what it's all about. We're reaching people. We're touching people. We're establishing a community. And, uh, man, hell's broke loose in Kentucky. But heaven is greater than the gates of hell. And let me tell you something, folks. We have this promise that, that hell is going to rage. Uh, it's going to open up its mouth without measure. It's, gonna, it's, going to, it's going to resonate, vibrate, and try to demonstrate. But the people of God have got to pray and put a lid on this. It's witchcraft. And, and my hat's off to 
is his name, Daniel Cameron, the attorney general, uh, the black gentleman, uh, black attorney general of Kentucky, uh, Mr. Cameron, uh, who, who stood up and done his job. He stood up and done his job. And, and, and I'm not saying yay or nay. Let me tell you the most ignorant people on the face of the planet, people that riot and protest and do stuff, and you haven't even heard the facts. You don't even know what's went on. You know what the Bible says about you? You're a fool. If you answer a matter before you've heard it, you're a fool. When you, when you do things uh, in protest and you don't even know, you know, you know what the deliberations are, that's foolish. You're crazy. You got to get the sides. And this man is a, is a black man and a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure. Uh, not just from the black community, from the white community, all these people, all these these people that are out of their mind, put pressure on him and, you know, Beyonce comes out. I want to see that. Well, listen, Beyonce, I don't care if you can sing, you know, Taylor Swift and, and you know, you got people here. Try That's not how the system works. People are screaming, we want justice. Oh, do you really? Well, if we find the just truth, are you going to accept it? Why, no. Because these people are going to fight and throw a five-year-old tantrum like in the middle of aisle nine at Walmart, eh, no matter what happens. But I, I appreciate this man. And here's where I'm going. And, and let me say this. We mourn the death of uh, Breonna Taylor. And, you know, I just can't imagine what her family's going through. Well, I can. I've been there. I've been there. And the losing of my son. Uh, I, I know, I know what it's like to just feel like you've lost your mind and, and like you'll never be normal again. So I've been there and I was there just, what, what is it, two years ago. It's coming up on the second anniversary of losing my Seth. And, and when me and my wife lost my son, I know, but listen to me. I didn't say, well, guns are bad and, and, and want to ban guns. And technically it was a gun that, uh, took my son's life. But I understand something. I understand something. That if we go out and we say, get all the guns off the street, the criminals are still going to have guns. So you, you, you don't cut your nose out beside, beside your face. Listen to me. I appreciate people like uh, uh, Herschel Walker. Man, Herschel Walker. I, I loved Herschel back in the day. I really love him now. Uh, Leo Burrell, the black attorney, and Candace Owens. Woo! If you don't know who Candace Owens is, do yourself a favor. Now, don't do it while you're watching me. <laughs> I really don't care. Go, go, go YouTube some Candace Owens stuff. Go on her website. Get on her Facebook. This lady, she is, man, she's smart. She's bright, she is quick, and she's a Christian. I mean, she pre I watched her preach about a 10-minute spiel tonight. She went into here, and she is waking her people up. Now, I've been prophesying it, and that God is going to raise up people in the African-American community with the spirit of Dr. Martin Luther King, his mantle upon them, and that they will not be rioting and violent protest. These people will bring their people together under the umbrella of the, if these people that are doing all this would be as, as radical to, uh, uh, to have revival, my God, have mercy. But Candace Owens, you know, the list goes on and on. And here's what I love. They are turning right wing conservative. They are pushing their people away from this demonic, and you better hear me, demonic, Democrat Party. They are full of some devil. Somebody said, well, I thought preachers weren't supposed to talk like that. Well, you thought wrong because what turned this nation around, you know, in the 50s or 60s, and, and even when you go back, when you look at Dr. Martin Luther King, was the pulpits were preaching. They were telling people. The government was afraid because we had prophets and we had people that were uh, preaching and declaring like Martin Luther King. I believe he was a prophet in a, in a way to, to, to a generation. And, and, and people uh, feared and reverenced that these men were holding up the Bible. These men, you remember Dr. Martin Luther King holding up that Bible and talking about, I had a dream. I've been on a mountaintop. He wasn't preaching hate. He wasn't preaching one life matters over one other ethnicity. He said, I have a dream that white men and black men, white children and black children will walk together hand in hand. 
if you say that to this bunch of people, these people are racist, man. I'm just going to tell you. If you're white and you're wrong, I'm going to tell you wrong. If you're black and you're wrong, this preacher is going to tell you wrong. These are black racists. And I have preached. I've stood in pulpits and told churches, you have a racist spirit here. And the way you treat black people is incorrect. But, you know, you'll find out who the real, the real Christians are when it gets to this. Because if, if I was a black preacher right now, I wouldn't be running around with a Black Lives Matter shirt on. That's witchcraft voodoo. You, are, you, you, you lost me. You should be telling people, and you should be telling your people, don't get caught up in that. As I, as a white man, would tell my people, the KKK is wrong. That's not God. That's not love. And, you know, somebody said, he said, yeah, I said that. I said it. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again next week, and I'm going to say it then uh, thereafter. You know why? Because I don't preach in fear. I don't preach worried about what was somebody. Because my black friends that know me, they know me. And they dig where I'm coming from, and they know what I'm saying. And you know why? The black Christians aren't out here throwing rocks and bricks and, and, and acting crazy and trying. These people are so afraid of Trump, that's what they're doing. So my hat off to this uh, African-American uh, uh, Kentucky Attorney General uh, Daniel Cameron. Man, you're, you're, you're powerful. You're awesome. I guess you see uh, these protesters uh, tonight have converged in Kentucky onto uh, a church parking lot hiding out of the church. Did you see the lady in Logan, Ohio? They arrested her and tased her at a football game because she wasn't wearing a mask. You know, it's just crazy, man. It's like, you know, you can, you can write. Kamala Harris said, I don't blame these people for writing and taking to the street. She said, matter of fact, I'm for them. She's for them burning down businesses and destroying restaurants and, and property. Uh, they, that's what you get. If you get Biden... And, and Kamala, that's what you get. You're going to get, every night, you're going to get WWE. It's going to be terror. If you're mad, write, protest, fight, and act crazy. That's what you're going to get. But this lady is at a football game, not wearing a mask. They tased her and drug her out of there and, and put her in jail. You see the narrative that's being spent? It's crazy. And many of you heard, I know you've heard from back, and I'm just going to share this. I get to my teaching tonight. I always just give you a little news, a little update. But, uh, 2018, I give you the prophecy. It's on my Facebook page about, uh, it was the first live video i ever done, but I give you the prophecy that the Lord showed me that there would be people in high places going to jail underneath President Trump's administration, that God was going to begin revealing people in high places, exposing, well, all that's happening. Listen what's happening now. And you know the arrests that have already happening, but listen what is being uh, revealed now. We're getting news that the FBI knew that a Russian investigation was a hoax when they was putting this on the uh, POTUS and on his administration. They even used a fake dossier. All this is coming out now uh, from a known Russian spy. The guy they were gathering their intelligence from was a known Russian spy that is spying and, and they're investigating him. But, oh, 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 you're against Trump? Well, don't take him to jail then. What dirt do you have? What, what can you say? This guy, I mean, you, you can't make this stuff up. They've been investigating him for like 10 years. And then, then they start using him. Even though he's a Russian agent, they start using him to gather information from the dossier uh, for Trump while they're accusing Trump of being <laughs> into Russian collusion. <laughs> these hypocrites, these Jezebels, these deflectors, they are going to be revealed as having done what they're accusing Trump of doing. Does that sound like some people that you know? I mean, that's how people do. They'll accuse you of lying because they know they lie. Uh, uh, Hillary and Comey, uh, they're all coming under fire about it. Now all their emails are coming out. A lot of their texts are coming out. It, it was so bad, and this is what I, I've, I've heard some news a little bit today. It said it was so bad that FBI agents that were working in this case, not just at the highest level, but even the lower level, you know what they were doing? 
the FBI, because you can read their texts back and forth. They like we are going to get skinned for that. They said one of them said it looks like that they want a Clinton presidency and not a Trump. They said because this is crazy. They said this is conspiracy theories to the highest heaven, and this is what they were doing. The FBI agents that were working on this, you know, bunch of fake stuff, trying to get the president impeached. They started taking out uh, 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 personal liability insurance on themselves in fear of the backlash that was going to happen because of their actions of, uh, of collaborating with the government to impeach the president because they knew it was being made up. They knew Comey and they knew that Hillary was financing it, paying for it. They knew what was going on was going to get them in some hot water. I mean, these guys, I mean, these FBI agents ain't stupid. So it was so bad that FBI agents were literally, look it up, they were taking out personal uh, liability insurance on themselves to protect themselves because they knew they were probably going to be sued and going to be in trouble. You know, their whole family and career was going to be washed down the tube. So uh, also it's recorded now, starting to come out, that these same agents, FBI agents, you can see them corresponding with each other, talking back and forth, saying, you know, that they're they're afraid and upset about Obama's administrator, uh, administration meeting, uh, trying to set up General Flynn. That was all. Man, they ruined that guy. This man is a decorated general. And they trying to ruin his life, and may have, but you know, God, God can help him. So, Comey and all these agents, you, you can see where they're saying, "Uh oh, this doesn't look good for it. now." It's all, and what I'm telling you, all I'm saying is this: the corruption in the high places is now being exposed, just like God told me it was going to be. It that is happening, and I'm not saying me; I'm saying God said that, and now that's happening in our country. There's a lot of things. Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden is under investigation. The problem is the officials at the highest level, they're trying to block it. But Burisma, this thing is under investigation, the, the, all this money he made. Let, let me tell you this. This is what should, why I'm telling you this. See, these people, you know, for instance, when they come against Trump, they spent $40 million trying to impeach him. If somebody spent $40 million on you trying to find dirt, could they, they probably could find something. Somewhere you got a speeding ticket or you did something. You did so. If you spend forty million dollars and can't come up with nothing, you're pretty clean, brother. Because I'm here to tell you, if they spent forty million dollars on most of us, even us Christians, they could find somewhere. You, I mean, there's a technicality somewhere. You made a mistake. Forty million dollars and don't get nothing. That tells you it was made up. But here's my point: they're doing it there now. But eventually, they're going to come after the churches and the preachers and the ministry like this. And what we're going to do, we don't have millions of dollars to defend ourselves. We better start praying. And let me tell you what we better do. We better keep men like this in power or else the church. I'm not voting for Trump. I am voting for Judeo-Christian family values. I'm preaching pro-life. I, what I preach is what I vote for. Pro-life, pro-Israel pro-guns, pro-First, Second Amendment, you know, freedom of speech, freedom to assemble, you know, and the freedom of press. The press now is a joke. You know, all, basically, you got one channel that's for Trump. That's Fox, most of them. Some are not even on there. But they're for Trump. All the others are for Biden. And it's just, it's not even, and, and I even hate it for Fox. It's like, well, when they come on, they're just going, no matter what you say, they're for Trump. With uh, No matter what they say. But, you know, truth is truth. And it kind of makes you, watch what I'm pointing out to you. It brings you to a point. You have to draw a side. Do you remember like back, this for instance, Dan Rather. They just told you the news. They reported it. You decide. You, now I remember watching them thinking, now who is he for? Well, uh, well, who are they for? Are they Now, that joker don't have to talk but five minutes, and you can tell. I mean, they bring on two guests, and they're just jumping on. So, you know, there's no gray areas anymore. Uh, here's something else for you. You know, you see these Antifa, Black Lives Matter, thugs in, in, in uh, Louisville tonight, standing in front of a black police officer. I felt so sorry for this guy. Now, this is what I'm saying. If black lives matter, do all black lives matter or just the ones that you want to use and spend a narrative on? 
because I know black lives matter. I know they all matter. But this black guy's life don't matter because here's these black people and white people. They're in front of him flipping him the bird and they're cussing him, calling him the N-word. One black person calling another black person the N-word. And just cuss, and this guy, man, I, 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 you know, this is how I think. I don't know if you got it. I'm being very real tonight. You know, I, 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 when I do these videos, I tell people, I say stuff I don't say in church, but this is just how it is. This guy's got a wife. This guy probably got a daughter and a son and a mama, and they got to watch this police officer stand there. And people in his face, I'll kill you, you blankety blank and blank. And this cop's just sitting there. And these people doing this, with Black Lives Matter shirts on to a black man. I rest my case, man. See, black lives don't matter if it's black babies being aborted. That don't matter. What matters is, is it spins a narrative and it's basically they're using, they're using, this is, this is, how, this is how sincere I want to say, they're using black people to push an agenda to get Trump out, Biden, and Kamala in. And when they're done, they're going to drop these people like a bad habit. They don't care nothing about nobody. No lives matter. They get their votes and it's done. The officer that was shot, sniper shot, by, you know, I say by a domestic terrorist, what it was, he's a black policeman. Y'all. He's a black policeman at a supposed Black Lives Matter uh, rally. He's out here basically protecting even the people that are protesting. Around. He gets shot. He's a black man. Gets sniper shot. I mean, you could, listen, folks. We need to wake up. And, and you know, all it would take, because I'm nobody. I know I'm nobody. But some of these guys that have big platforms, big preaching platforms, they need to start telling the truth, man. They need to start telling the truth. I mean, I listen to Herschel Walker today preach more truth than that I've heard many apostolic preachers preach as of lately. They are not going to talk about this, but they don't have to talk about it. Because they don't, I just don't want to get involved. That's right. What you're going to do, you're going to lose your rights. It's going to, because it don't affect you now. But look at California. Look at what's happening. And I'm going to tell us this. We're going to stand up in Judgment Day. And we have to give an account. And, and, and I want to be a part. Of, I would love to say that I have been a part of, 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 uh, what's this doing? That I have been a part of, facilitating change. I'm trying to get you some brighter light here. I mean, that's better. And what's happening with the Supreme Court Justice. I'm going to pray, play you a part of a prophecy. I'm going to get into this teaching. Uh, I think I am. Uh, let me see if it's going to let me do it. Would y'all like to hear it? This is a prophecy that I gave uh, by uh, uh, inspiration at School of the Prophets. Uh, and basically, this is what it says. I don't know if you want to hear it, but I, I may play it for you. But this uh, prophecy, uh, the Lord gave me, he, he basically said, I'm not through with America. He said, I will begin to unite the races. And uh, you, just, you can go back, if you, you're interested in Black Lives Matter, you can go back, and I did a whole uh, video on this, exposing Black Lives Matter, uh, where Antifa comes from, George Soros, you know, all the funding is uh, voodoo, hoodoo, the three ladies that run it, the witchcraft. I, I, I give all that. Uh, but uh, this prophecy, and I'm, I'm, if I can pull it up here, I'm going to play you a little clip from it if you'd like to hear it. Uh, it, it basically God said, well, I'm just going to let you hear it. I, uh, I, I was, I'm debating about playing it. I, I, I feel weird sometimes. And the Lord told me not to do that. I feel weird playing myself preaching or myself prop. But the Lord said, well, if you don't want to hear yourself, why would anybody else want to hear you? And I don't want to hear myself. I don't want it to feel like that's what I'm doing. But at the same time, I'm not preaching about me. I'm preaching about Jesus. So I, I, the problem is I don't like hearing my voice. When I hear my voice, I don't know. Do you all ever do this? You hear your voice 
like on a video or something, like, is that me? Do I sound that bad? Because I, my voice, I, I just, I, I'm, I'm like, that guy, I don't know him. But <laughs> at any rate, I'm going to play it, and I'll just plug my ears. But and I want you to catch the essence of, of what's being said here. When God is saying, I'm not a through with you, America. He tells you what's going to happen with Donald Trump. I'm just going to let it play here for about two minutes. But the Lord would say, I'm not finished with you, America. I'm not done with you. For I'm going to move on this world one more time. And there's a remnant in America who has been unseen and unnoticed. There's a remnant in America who's never been on television, who's never been on media, but they've been in my throne room, saith the Lord. Quickly, listen. I'm just prophesying. Listen. I shall cut her down quickly. Let me give you this to you. Save your leaders. I shall cut her down quickly. You'll hear it. white together. And we had an earthquake the next day. Let me get this. We said that on a Saturday the next day, there was an earth. I said, God said, I will shake Virginia. Saturday. Sunday, we had an earthquake in North Carolina and shook into Virginia. The next day. And the part of that that I, I want you to key in on, he said, I will remove those with blood on their hands. You know, it's just about this Supreme Court nomination that's coming. And I believe it's going to overturn Roe versus Wade. It's going to do a lot of things. Uh, that prophecy is on my website. It's on my YouTube channel. I posted on Facebook. It is from uh, August the 8th. 
The name of it is Prophecy of Washington, D.C. Prophecy, Prophecy of Washington, D.C. And that's all I'm going to play of it right now. And you should go back and uh, listen to that. But the thing that caught me, you know, you know, when that, when, when that hit me that day, it was just like an interpretation, like a prophecy come out. And I just began letting it go. It just go. And it talked about Trump receiving the Holy Ghost. I'm not through with you, America, bringing uh, racial uh, uh, revival, black and white together. But then in all this, he said, those that have blood on their hands, I will remove them. I will save your leaders and those that don't want, you know, what I'm doing, I will take them out of the way and I will cut her, female. I will cut her down quickly. So, you know, this is, uh, this is just another one of those things to me that, uh, you know, I don't, I don't need to, certainly I don't need to prove anything to myself. I've been hearing my prophecies for 20 something years, not longer than that maybe. Uh, I have confidence in my cooking, you know what I'm saying? Uh, my relationship with God and when it comes to this. Somebody asked me last night, I'm gonna get to this preach, teaching. Somebody asked me the other night, I, I had prophesied over a guy's brother and I mean, it was detail. It was just script. If some of you were there, not before last, I think. I mean, I was telling this guy where he'd been, what had happened, how he'd come through it, and, uh, you know, what he lost and what he got back. And, and just, you know, it got very descriptive. His brother was there. His brother come up to me when I was leaving out. And, I mean, sweet guy, big guy, rough-looking guy, but it was sweet, you know. And you, you never judge a book by its cover. And some some nice people, it's fangs. They look nice. They did. The other people, they look rough. They're teddy bear. This big dude comes to me, and I mean, he, you know, I could tell he's lived it rough. And he said, "I want to talk to you. He said, I want to ask you something." I said, "All right." He said, "He said I'm not second guessing you." He said, "That's not what I'm saying." He said, "I just got a question. How do you know what you're telling these people? How do you know that's right?" And I said, well, what, 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 what do you mean? He said, well, he said, that's my brother. I said, well, he said, how did you know that? He said, because I know. He said, but how can you tell him? Because he said, I think he said, you know, it's the first time they ever heard me preach. First time I ever seen him. He said, how? he said, I'm just trying to figure out how you know that you're going to say that. It's going to be right. I said, I'm going to tell you how. I said, because it's the same voice that tells me to repent and to get right. And if you can't hear the Lord speak to you and tell you, boy, don't do that again. Straighten up. Quit doing that. Quit. I ah, don't say that. If you can hear that voice, this is what I told him. I, I said, have you ever heard God tell you straighten up? Don't do that again. He's, oh, yeah. I said, it's the same voice. But the reason people can't hear from God, they are stifling the small still voice because it's saying stuff they don't like the prophetic it doesn't always tell you things you want to use about you it's going to have some correction in you it's going to tell you apologize say you're sorry i don't want to you know if you tell him that he, he it, it just gets quiet and quiet and so that's how i know and that's how you would know is because whenever uh god is speaking to you it's the same voice. i said it's not another voice it's in the same place, in the same register, in the same vibration, in the same sweet Jesus, same boy. All right, folks, let me talk to you. This is going to be a three-part series. I'm going to get in the first part tonight. The third dimension and the return of the demigods. I'm going to get into demigods somewhat next week. I'm going to get into the folly of fallen angels next week, and then I'm going to get into transhumanism, and eventually I'll get into the vaccine and the other things that are coming. But we got to start here because this is a big thing, and I know that people go back and watch these videos, so I have to be very thorough and because I know what can happen if I just get off on a tangent. So I want to be very thorough because this is being recorded, you know, okay. So I've spent the last, <clears throat> excuse me, month or so talking to you and, and talking about end time prophecy, the book of Revelation, the beast, the 10 toes, all of that, go back and watch it. But along with that teaching, I focus very, very heavily on what? Prophetic patterns, formulas, and symbolism to help you understand that. And I showed you how a formula 
applies in several instances in, 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 in the law first mentioned. One of the patterns, though, we're going to talk about tonight uh, that's used in Scripture is the uh, pattern of numerology. And I, I get a lot of people that ask me what do numbers mean. I'm going to deal with the number tonight. I'm going to deal with the number three tonight, actually. That is a powerful prophetic number. And, it, and if you'll listen, even if you're thinking about another number, three plays into other numbers like three and six and 12. Uh, they have similarities with three. So just pay attention. Remember the rules here. Don't fight. If somebody gets on here saying things like somebody did last week, ignore them, leave them alone, or block them. Don't pay them any attention. Don't retaliate. Don't get ahead of me and just play along. Just work along with us. Don't try to, uh, uh, you know, if you want to teach, get on your own page and do it. But over here, we play fair and correctly, okay? And if you have questions, send them to me privately. A question or two, I'll, I'll do my best to answer. All right? I love you. Let's go. Now, in the Bible, there is a book in this Bible called Numbers, a numbering book. God uses numbers, but in the book of Daniel, chapter 8, about verse 13, I'm not going to read it to you. I'm just going to, I want to, I'm going to start with this premise. We find an angel. There is one angel talking to another angel. Now, you got to dig a little deeper than that because when you hear them talking, uh, they're called saints. One saint said to another saint, but when you look at it, the Kodash, which is a messenger, which is an angel, one angel is talking to a second angel. And he's asking that angel a question. This angel asked this angel a question. Here's his question. How long shall the vision be concerning the daily sacrifice? He's asking about a uh, 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 time. And he's called, this angel is called a certain angel or a certain saint. One angel said to a certain angel. This, this is Daniel 8 and 13. Somebody just type that in there. You can go back and look at it later. So one angel said to a certain angel, uh, about the number of days of the vision, how long would it be? You, you, he knew that this angel had it numbered, had it counted, that he was an accountant, so to speak. Uh, so this angel is appealing to this other angel who is a keeper of time. His ability is to number and to evaluate and keep up with things. So this certain angel, angel, if you look into it in the Hebrew as I was even today, his name is Palmoni. Palmoni. Literally, uh, you can go into the King James and then pull it up from Strong's. And as I studied Palmoni today, who's the name, the Hebrew name in Daniel of this angel is Palmoni, the certain angel. Uh, I found, as I started researching him, even Wikipedia talks about Palmoni. And Palmoni, though, uh, the Hebrew term, it literally means the numberer of secrets. He numbers secrets or uh, the wonderful number. So this is an angel that deals with uh, numerology or this Palmoni is the name God. You know, God names angels. Folks, this one's in there. You're not going to see it on the surface of the King James, but you can find it. Uh, Palmoni, P A L. M-O-N-I, and sometimes Y, uh, but he is the angel of numbers. And, and God has these specialty uh, angels, you know, messenger angels, warrior angels, watching angels. This angel is a recorder of, of numbers, prophetic days, times, years, visions, etc. So, so for those that are uh, uh, very uh, prophetic, especially uh, looking at numbers, one of the numbers that is very important and very prophetic, and this Palmoni is going to work with it, is in the life of Jesus, the number three. In the life of Jesus, the number three shows up so much. It, it, it's more, more, every time I go back, it's almost an exhaustive because you find it when it even doesn't say three, there'll be three things that aren't numbered, but you got to count them. So the mystery of the number three is really found in the life of Jesus. It's revealed in the heart of man to help you enter into what I'm going to be teaching, the third dimension. And the third dimension is the prophetic realm. 
It's the place of secrets. It's the place of power. It's the place of great joy. It's the place where the Holy Ghost can let you come into a place of understanding things that you could not know by yourself. So, uh, and when you begin to study seeking the Lord and you understand these patterns that I've been teaching you for about a month, when you understand prophetic symbology and patterns, then it opens you up to how God can speak to you and begin to show you things uh, about the end time or anything else. And it's just, you gotta, it's all gonna come back to this Bible, folks. You, you're not getting this out of thin air. So the number three deals with three things. Would you like to hear? The number three deals with resurrection, restoration, and revelation. Three R's. Let me say them again. The number three deals predominantly with this theme, resurrection, restoration, revelation. The number three carries with it this theme, sight, wisdom, vision, which are revelation, those three things. Sight, it's seeing, it's wisdom of knowing and vision, but it has to do with being able to perceive or have things uh, downloaded to you, revealed that you're able to see through the surface, which most people in this hour cannot do. So things like this, on the third day of creation, what does God do? Well, this is, this is how I already showed you this. Those of you that follow my teaching, I teach you about the law of first mention. You got to go find, if you want to know, for instance, we want to know about the number three. Okay, let's find the pattern of three. Where am I going to look? Well, let me go to that. You don't go to the end. You go as far back as you can and you go to creation. And when you get to creation, you look and see what God done on the third day of creation. See? And then you'll see a formula. What he's going to do with that number day. So God didn't say Wednesday. God said the evening in the morning was the first day. Even the morning was the second day. The evening in the morning was the third day. So he's putting a number here. It says three. Now, the number three on the third day, the unveiling takes place of the earth. You might want to take a note here. On the third day, God unveils the earth. He allows uh, uh, land to be revealed. Incidentally, incidentally, you and I were created from the earth. And what happens on the third day, uh, God pulls the water back. That's what he does. The land was not created on the third day. L let me read it to you. Genesis 1 and 9. Genesis 1 and 9. God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together in one place and let dry land appear. Now, I want you to pay attention to this word that gets spoken on the third day of what God commanded to happen on the third day. Move the waters and let land appear. Let me say it to you again. That word appear is ra'ah. <laughs> ra'ah, R-A-A-H, Raha. Raha means perceive, see, to have a vision or to find out or to discover. In other words, he said, move the water where we can see the ground. Now remember, what happens on the third day, something's blocking. You got water in the way and the Lord says, okay, there's something here that I want to see. Here, here's the land. Uh, I need to get what's in here to the surface. He doesn't create the earth on the third day. He reveals the earth on the third day. He moves the water, reveals the land. Guess what? Then he says, I want it to appear. I want the land to be seen. I want it to be uh, in vision, in sight. And that word appear is very important. Ra so on the third day, God literally unveils the earth. It's important to know that you and I were formed from the dust of the earth, but it's not until God reveals the dry ground that the earth can be seen. God is about to reveal you. Somebody needs to put it in there right now. God's about to reveal me to me. 
Some of us need a self-revelation. And that's what this is. You come out. That's what he was saying. Come out. Come out wherever you are. Ground. Because I can't create man until I reveal the plan and I show the dry ground. That's what happened. It's, it's like a curtain being pulled back. The third day then, when this land appears, it speaks of sight, seeing, vision, insight, eyesight, foresight. Uh, some time ago, uh, I won't tell you where I was, but the Lord spoke to me. And I may have mentioned this a while back. This is when all this was starting to, to come crazy. I was actually coming home on my way back uh, because of the quarantines. I'm well, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, I am sending an angel to you, and his name will be Foresight. This angel will be Foresight. I absolutely did not know what that was going to mean, but I knew when God spoke to me, and I knew what it meant, and I'd had an angel come to my room uh, in, in, in a hotel room. I had an a angel step into my room and spoke some things and woke me up. And I tried to raise up, and I know I've mentioned that, and, and tried to come up and raise up, and I went back to sleep. It knocked me down. And, and what the Lord spoke to me then and what he told to me about this angel who would be coming to me, whose name was Foresight, uh, when I started studying what that meant, he meant that this angel is going to reveal what's coming. He, I'm going to give you some sight about some things that are about to take place. Well, can I tell you since that time, that that has intensified, and God confirmed that to me many ways. So foresight, revelation, the word revelation, which is the word apocalypse or apocalypsis, or the book of revelation in your Bible is the book of apocalypse. That word really means to uncover or to pull back a curtain. And that's what Paul prayed, and that's what I'm going to pray for you whenever he said in Ephesians 1 and 17, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, given to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Then verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. So I got some bad news and I got some good news. Which one you want first? I know what you want. The bad news, it really ain't bad. The bad news is this. Your miracle is not coming. The bad news is your harvest is not on the way. Bad news. Your blessing is not coming. The good news is because it's already here. What has got to happen is, is it's under the water. It's flooded. It's the ground. It's the third day. The principle is something has to be removed in order to show what is already present. That's why God revealed the dry ground under the water in order to reveal the harvest that was inside of you. Does that make sense? Okay. And then watch what God said in verse 11. This is all happening on the third day. God said, let the earth, this is the ground that's revealed, let the earth bring forth grass, herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so it had to obey God you know what you cannot bring forth yield uh, uh, bear fruit until your seed inside of you is revealed that's why he uncovered it first the seed is Christ. Oh, Lord, I'm going to pray. The seed is Christ. You, look at me. You must see Christ in yourself or you're not going to yield and bring forth. You, you got to see Christ in you. When you see Christ in you, if you don't see Christ in you, there's no hope of glory. There's no goodness. There's no mercy. There's no harvest. There's no power. But watch what happens. On the third day, he reveals the earth and then says, let that seed in there come up. And so what happens on the third day is God reveals the land, the seed, the fruit, and the tree. Now, don't make me preach, but I'm about to have one now.
Are you ready for this? Let me say this to you again. This is all in, in Genesis. This is verse 11. On the third day, God reveals the land, the seed, the fruit, and the tree. When does this happen? This is the day of sight. This is the day that something appears. This is the day of revelation, restoration, and uh, 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 celebration. Now watch this. The land is the man, referring to the dust that he came out of. Watch. The seed is Christ, who was buried in it. The fruit is the harvest that Jesus reaped at his resurrection. And the tree is the cross that he hung on. All of this was revealed on the third day. God revealed land, seed, fruit, tree. You want me to read it to you again? So you get that revelation really good because I want you to have it really good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass and yielding seed and the fruit tree and the fruit after his kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth. So God brings all this to pass and he's revealing you the land, the seed, the fruit, the tree, which is God showing you the land is the man, the dust he come out of, the seed is Christ who's planted in the heart of the earth. The fruit is the harvest that Christ reaps at his resurrection. And the tree that's bearing fruit is the cross that he died on. Now watch. When he moved these waters, when, when on the third day, when he moves these waters for this land up here, so he's got something to work with, and, and, and the seed sprang up, this is why let me slow down. This is why when you're baptized in Jesus' name, there's a new life, resurrected seed, restored harvest, and appreciation for the tree of life in you. Because when you're covered up in water and then you break the plane and come out of it, you come out different than the way you went in. Look out. Listen to this. God, God, give me this revelation today. This is just for you that are watching me tonight. Listen. There were two trees in the garden, right? The tree of life, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay? Satan tempted the woman with the tree of knowledge, not the tree of life. Think about this now. Think about this. Why didn't he tempt them with the tree of life? He tripped, he, he, he tripped them up when he got them seeking the tree of knowledge. Had they ate the tree of life, <laughs> can't die. But they touched, the, you always want what you can't have, see. But watch this. But look at what Jesus does. <laughs> He dies on the third tree. Uh-oh, I'm talking about the number three. Watch. You got the tree of life, and you got the tree of knowledge. The devil messed them up. But watch what Jesus does. Then Jesus brings the third tree, which is the tree of death. Tree of life, tree of knowledge. Got him in trouble. Jesus said, get the tree of death. Why? He restored life and revealed knowledge on the cross. He gets a third tree. When the third tree comes into play, watch, it brings resurrection, restoration, revelation. And watch the pattern now. Watch the pattern in the symbology. Watch this. The number three, which I'm showing you, it carries the anointing of sight and vision appear. Let dry land appear. Now watch this. It's equally important to understand this. Notice how Satan always tries to rip off what, you know, uh, and, and pervert what God is doing. He, he, he tries to rip off the pattern of the three. I'm going to show it to you. 
For in Genesis 3, amazingly, Genesis chapter 3, now I'm about to blow your mind, so watch. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 5, Satan said, For God doth know in the day that you eat thereof your eyes. Watch, we're talking about vision and sight. Here comes Satan going to try to promise what he's seen God do on the third day. Here he comes. Watch what he says. God knows the day you eat thereof, your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And the woman saw the tree. See the eye involved? The woman saw the tree, that it was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes. It's about sight, appearing, revelation, insight. Pleasant to the eyes, and a tree that was desired to make one wise. We're talking about wisdom and revelation, ain't we? Satan is selling this to them. Watch this. And she took the fruit thereof and did eat, gave it to her husband that's with her, and the eyes of them both were opened. I've said this before, and some people just don't want to believe the Bible, and I've had people argue with me about this. And, well, they didn't argue with me. I believe what you want to believe. But listen to me. Just look at me. Verse 7 says, The eyes of them both were opened. Ladies and gentlemen, if their eyes were open, that means that their eyes have been closed. You can't open a door that has never been shut. You can't shut a door that's never been opened. Listen, their eyes were open when they ate the fruit, right? This is powerful. This is powerful. Because their eyes have had to have been closed in order to come open. Now, I'm going to show this to you, and this will show you how the prophetic works. You just got to believe the Bible for what it's saying. Notice how Satan reversed their vision. This is what he's done to you, and I'm going to try to show you how Jesus is trying to reverse the curse. Watch what Satan done to them. Satan reversed their vision. He took their spiritual sight and open their physical eyes. What eyes were closed and what eyes were open? Well, first of all, I just read to you and in, in what Paul said in Ephesians 1 and 17, the eyes of your understanding be open. He's trying to tell you, you got to get something open. Why? Because Satan closed it on us in the Garden of Eden. Your spiritual eyes are closed. What does that mean? That means that when Eve saw the tree, she saw it, that it was good, she perceived it. She did not see that with her physical 2020 vision. She was looking through another set of eyes. Watch. After she eats the fruit, then her natural eyes come open. She, Adam and Eve were walking by another sight. They were not using these eyes. They didn't have to. They were seeing through spiritual eyes that Paul said is praying that you can get open. Satan's traded it off with them. He said, well, you're going to see through your body eyes, through your flesh eyes. And when they do that, those eyes come open. Their spiritual eyes are darkened. They're closed. Listen to me. And that's farther proved. Watch this in verse 8, what it says then in, in, in chapter 3 of Genesis. Genesis 3 and 8. Watch. This proves the point. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking. They heard. They didn't see it. They heard the voice of the Lord walking. Why? They lost their ability to to see in the spirit. They, they have been communing with God, but things change now. What happens is, verse 8, they heard him, and listen, they heard a voice. How do you hear a voice walking? And that's something. But anyway, they hear the voice of the Lord walking in the garden. They heard a walking voice. Watch this. They couldn't see him. They now, faith has to come by hearing because the enemy has shut their spiritual eyes, opened their physical eyes. Can I tell you what our problem is now? We are seeing through our 
physical eyes and we're blind through our spiritual eyes. And you got to believe the Bible. And if you want to operate in what I'm trying to tell you is available, you got to know how to get this switched around. And until God really showed me this, and I was seeing already, but until he showed me this, then I started realizing how to get other people uh, their ability to see what they're hearing. See, they were hearing the voice, but they couldn't see the voice. But whenever you learn that there's been a switcheroo changed on you and that Satan closed you down in one dimension and opened you up in another dimension, and watch this. In other words, they lost their ability to see in the spirit. They're stuck. They get stuck. Now, God's trying to help me help you <laughs> get your vision back. Spiritual 2020 is coming to you. Now, we'll watch. We're about to reverse the curse of spiritual blindness on whatever, 222 of you that are on here. Because by God, the God of this world, according to 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, in whom the God of this world hath blinded their mind. See what I'm trying to tell you? The enemy put spiritual blindness from Adam and Eve throughout humanity. Of which them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who's the image of God, should shine to them. So there you have it again. The God of this world, who is Satan, he has blinded people's minds. But if God can open eyes, he can open spiritual eyes. Satan flipped their vision, spiritual to natural. But I wish somebody just type in there right now and say, devil, put it back. Put it back. You're going to put my vision back. Watch how the use of the number three. Now, all this I'm talking about, we're going back to uh, 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 the third day. But watch how the number three uh, the number three or the number 33 in scripture is synonymous with wisdom, sight, and insight. Now, I want you to get this before I move on. That's going to be the premise that we're going to use here for a little bit. This is, I've showed you the third day. I showed you Genesis 3, how Satan comes after sight and vision. God is trying to get you to have the ability to appear. What happened on the day of Pentecost? He opened up their eyes and their ears and their tongues. There appeared to them cloven tongues of fire. They saw. They, oh, he opened their ears. Now watch this. Watch how the use. I need to write myself a note. Y'all wait for me just a second. God just spoke something to me. I, I got to do something here. Okay, now listen. Watch how the use of the number three in Scripture, and, and, and if you believe in coincidences, there are people that just believe this Bible, even the King James, they just think well, it, just, it just somehow fell in there and it's no in specific order. It just is what it is. Let me tell you something, folks. God has orchestrated this thing down through time and even... Gutenberg's printing press and good old King James and everybody else. God's had his hand on people. He's still got his hand on people. Now watch God's use of the number three and 33. Somebody type in three and 33. Jeremiah 33 and three. Let's see what that says. We're going to use threes for a minute. I'm just going to show you something. I'm going to show you how good God is. This will build your faith and your confidence in your Bible. Watch. Jeremiah 33 and 3. Watch what it says. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show you. Look at this. Is it amazing that I'm showing you that the number three coincides with a revelation of the ground that you come out of. I'm showing you how Satan comes after your sight, how God's trying to give it back to you. And then here I'm showing you how God says through Jeremiah and Jeremiah 33 and verse 3, call unto me and I'll answer you and show you that sight. Great and mighty things which you know not. Powerful verse. Then look at Ezekiel 33 
and verse 33. Ezekiel 33 and verse 33. And when this comes to pass, and lo, he said, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. What is a prophet? It's a seer. It is a revealer of, 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 of secrets, or a code breaker. Watch what, it, this is amazing though. This is in Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 33. Nothing but threes here, ladies and gentlemen. And he says, when it comes to pass, and lo, it will come, they shall know that a prophet had been among them. Let's try this. Job 33 and 3. And Job is the earliest manuscript. It was written before the book of Genesis. Though Genesis has ancient accounts, uh, Genesis wasn't written until Moses showed up. Job lived before Moses. But watch. Uh, Job 33 and verse 3. My word shall be of the uprightness of my heart, and my lips shall utter knowledge clearly. Clear knowledge. Do you see the sight? Do you see wisdom, sight, insight, revelation, vision that is coinciding with 33 and 3, Job 33 and 3. I'm going to uh, see knowledge clearly. How about this? Uh, Job 33 and verse 33. That was 3. Now look at Job 33 and verse 33. If not, hearken unto me, hold thy peace, and I shall teach thee wisdom. It's amazing. Now, it gets powerful. I'm laying this foundation for a reason because I'm really going to get you somewhere in a minute. But Numbers chapter 33 and verse 3, uh, he said, On the morrow after the Passover, the children of Israel went out with a high hand in the sight, here's the word again, sight of the Egyptians. How is it that every time we got a 33, 3, uh, 33 and 3 or a 3, how is it that we keep getting this word sight and vision? Well, the word sight, are you ready for this? The word sight is in your Bible 333 times. I'm waiting. Listen, folks, it ceases to be a coincidence with me right there. Them verses, I'm like, okay, Brother Jay, I got you. Okay. Nah, nah. But let me tell you, now, this is uh, Jeremiah 33 and 3. Ezekiel 33 and 33, Job 33 and 3, Job 33 and 33, Numbers 33 and 3. All these are talking about sight and vision and seeing. And then I tell you, the word sight is in your Bible 333 times. See, this is where either you're a person that it has a propensity to believe God and have faith, or you doubt everything. And you can't come doubting and operate in gifts and power and knowledge and seeing and hearing because you're going to doubt and you're going to dismiss everything that gets you into the dimension of seeing. But if you're being led now, come on. If not, stand outside and catch us at the end. Let's try this. The word sight appears in the Bible 333 times. Three, three, three. Okay. Well, how about this? The 333rd chapter in the Bible. Let's go to the 333rd chapter in the Bible. It happens to be Isaiah 38 and 3. Watch. Isaiah 38 and 3. O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and hath done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Look at this. He said, oh God, I've walked before you perfectly. And I've done that which was good. And here's the word sight. The word sight, let me say it again, is 333 times in your Bible. And then the 333rd chapter of the good old King James Bible has the word sight in it. And then it says, Hezekiah, who, who is, is saying it, he wept sore. Interestingly enough, Hezekiah weeps through his seeing eyes. Whoo, shake Listen to me. Let me give you a word right now. 
Weeping eyes will become seeing eyes. Prophetic eyes are not dry eyes. You're going to go through a breaking. You're going to go through some pressure. But eyes that weep are eyes that see. Is it not amazing that the 333rd uh, 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 verse, or excuse me, chapter in the Bible has sight in it and has Hezekiah in it? Let me tell you why that's important. Because Hezekiah, who is found weeping in this uh, 333rd chapter of the Bible where sight is mentioned, Sites mentioned 333 times in the Bible. Hezekiah's name, Hezekiah, who is in that chapter weeping, his name is mentioned 33 times in the Bible. And see, there gets a place where you get out of the realm of coincidental possibility. And this is how when people ask me, how do you know? It's because... When these things start lining up and I see, not because one thing happens. Not because I just get an idea and inclination. Uh, it, it could be a pizza I ate. No. When it happens 333 times in the 333rd place, and then 33 more times in chapter 33, verse 3, and chapter 33, verse 33, and over and over repeated. After a little while, I start realizing every time it's there, the number three has to do with sight and eyes and vision. Come on now. All right, let's try this. Then, then, the 333rd verse. Now, I give you the 333rd chapter. Now, I'm going to show you the 333rd verse of the Bible. Are you ready for it? The 333rd verse of the Bible is Genesis 13 and 14. What did I say the theme is? What's the theme of the number three? Let's try again. Resurrection, restoration, revelation. The theme it carries is sight, vision, appear, dry land, appear, revelation, seeing. This realm. Watch. The 333rd verse of your Bible is Genesis 13, 14. And the Lord said unto Abraham, after that lot was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art, northward, southward, eastward, westward. He's telling him, I'm going to give you all this. He's telling you, as far as you can see, but see, if you don't have vision to see, and even, let me tell you this. When somebody starts showing it to you, like I'm, it should be even easier because some of us that have studied this for years and, and a lot of the things, and you know I've told you a lot of stuff I've seen a long time that I'm just now talking about. And I probably talked about some of this before. I'm just saying that I wish somebody would have come along and just told me. You know, back when we had the Concordia. We couldn't just Google it, man. We pray and trying to figure out why am I seeing the number three so much? And I start finding out with the number three. And I've known this for decades. But what I'm saying is then when somebody comes along and point, it should be easier for you to accept it the way I'm telling it to you. Now, check this out. The number three shows up way too many times in Scripture, folks, in relation to vision and sight to be happenstance, coincidental. Using the law of first mention, as I have taught you many, many times from the uh, Torah, from the book of Genesis, we see how the third day, well, along with it, there was a principle uh, established referring to things appearing, things being seen, things being found out. So in Genesis 3, I'm going to take you back what I showed you about the temptation. In Genesis 3 and 6, which again are multiples of 3, Genesis 3 and 6, which is the number of man, which is seeing man. They didn't see themselves. 3 is seeing, 6 is the number of man. Genesis 3 and 6, the woman saw the tree could make one wise. Why? They saw things they were not formally seeing. Notice the word wise is used in the third chapter of Genesis during the temptation. Watch. Proverbs, which you know the book Proverbs, is considered to be the book of wisdom, right? Remember, 
Satan is 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 peddling wisdom. Your eyes are seeing. Come on, go make your wise. That's going along with uh, what we find in Genesis three and six. Wisdom, wise, make you wise. The book of Proverbs, written by the wisest man that ever lived outside of Jesus. The word wise. That word wise shows up 66 times in the book of Proverbs. 66 is a multiple of 33. If it had been 65, it would have been 62, 67. No, it's going to be 66. What's the uh, uh, likelihood of that? 66 is a multiple of 33 twice. And when you begin to see what I'm showing you, you begin to see what's happening between the verses because you understand the formulas and the patterns and you understand that 66 is 33 twice, which is wisdom is showing up 66 times. It's in Proverbs, which means it is a double portion of wisdom. And that's what you're seeing and experiencing right now in this revelation. The word... Uh, uh, wise shows up 66 times. There's 66 books in the Bible. In other words, God is saying there's wisdom in every one, but there's a double portion on the book of Proverbs to make one wise. Now watch this. The word no, the word no, it also shows up 66 times in the book of Proverbs. Again, if you want to know some stuff, if you read one chapter of Proverbs a day, and I used to do that all the time, but when you read one chapter of the book of Proverbs, you will know some things. You will understand. It tells you about all kinds of things. Listen, the word understand, it shows up in Proverbs 66. I mean, it gets a point, folks. And people want to say, I just don't know if I can believe it. Well, oh, you have a little faith. I mean, you mean one of them is 63 and one six? No. Wise is 66 times in Proverbs. No is 66 times in Proverbs. And understand is 66 times. And 66 is a multiple of 33. 33 and 33 is 66. And it's 66 books of the Bible. And this is talking about wise. And, and, and the number three, which is at the root of this whole thing, always has to do with, based on what Brother Johnson is teaching me, has to do with wisdom and insight. Uh, I'm listening. In other words, watch this. For instance, uh, the, the enemy, the occult, they always try to pervert what God's doing. There are 33 levels to Freemasonry, if you begin to study. And I'm trying to give some of that stuff a break this week, but I'm going to pounce on it for a minute. There are 33 degrees of Freemasonry, okay? But, and they love that number. I'm going to show you why they love it. Because, because, uh, Walt Disney, uh, you may not know it, but Walt Disney, for instance, Walt Disney, who was a 33rd degree Freemason, uh, he was a Masonic sorcerer, uh, most all of his cartoons, if, if you go back and watch it, they're teaching your kids how to uh, work magic, cast spells, they got witches in all of them. And, uh, you know, from all their uh, uh, spell casting and their magic wands from the uh, branches of the holly tree, as I've taught you, hence we have Hollywood because the uh, witches made their wands from holly trees, which was Hollywood. Now you got Hollywood, which is a witchcraft society of people who are putting curse and spells and charms and soothsaying uh, your kids. The only way to be a part of Hollywood is to be initiated even as a witch or a warlock. And they'll tell you that. And 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 agree to promote. You got them to agree to promote their subliminal messages and advertisements, you know, pyramids and, and triangles and, and three sixes. And I'm throwing up three tonight. People are going to say that's 666. And it is. Uh, but we're, we're, I'm showing you the roots of this, that, uh, you know, the one eye covered symbolism in order, they're preparing your kids to 
come into the age of enlightenment and receive the Antichrist when he gets here. I'm going to play a video in this at some point, going to blow your mind what they're doing in concerts. Uh, their concert, they're going to the Running Man and the Burning Man, these big concerts I'm going to tell you about. And, and there, these guys are coming on the screen and said that there's a man here. He wants to live in you and open up your heart, open up. And all these people are up and just shouting for this. And this demon is coming in and they're telling him he's coming and that he needs you to bring him in the world. I'm, I'm whoa, 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 this is the Antichrist, man. So Walt Disney, uh, Walt Disney had a secret club or has a secret club. He's dead now, of course. But uh, it, it's for his elite only occult members, devil worshiping Illuminati friends. It's called it's called Club Thirty Three. Club Thirty Three. Club. But why club? Why would you call something Club Thirty Three? Because these people know some. Even Wikipedia says this. Wikipedia. Go to Wikipedia. Put in Club. 33. Club 33 is a private uh, set of private lounges located in three magic kingdoms. Now, they, I mean, come on, folks. This is a ripoff of what I'm showing you in the Bible. Club 33 is, is, is a set of private lounges located in three of the magic kingdoms, which are parts of Walt Disney parks and resorts. It's called Club 33. It's in three locations. Why? Because this is me talking now, not Wikipedia. Why? Because it refers to the three heavens that Lucifer intends to take over from God, uh, which he's not. Uh, 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 the earth, which he has hijacked. That's one uh, of the realms. Uh, the second heaven, which is the firmament, which is his dwelling place as the prince of the power of the air, the god of this world. And the third heaven, which is the heaven of the heavens, which he fell from. And regardless of what he thinks, he will never get back into. That's why how thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer. And, and there was found no place for him there. And his fallen angels, he's been kicked out. But this is a play on things. He's saying, I'm going to give sight. I'm going to make a deal with people. I'm going to overthrow God by winning his creation over to me. Never going to happen. Club 33 is located in three magic kingdoms. Just listen what you're saying. Listen what you're saying. It's a kingdom. This whole Disney World thing is a kingdom. And listen, I'm not knocking you if you work there. Please don't write me. Save your ink. We're in the world, not of it. I have friends that work there. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is it's a copycat, counterfeit kingdom. When you call something a kingdom, a magic enchanted kingdom, honey, there's only one kingdom I'm of, and there's only one king who's in it, and that's king of kings and lord of lords. What Satan's trying to do is mirror the three-level kingdom that he finds in God. He is trying to build a counter. This is all he does. He counterfeits. Now listen to this. Watch this. I'm going to a place now. Uh, Genesis 49 and 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. That's praise. Nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. Until Shiloh come. And the people be gathered together unto him. Shiloh is mentioned 33 times in the Bible. It is another name for the coming Messiah until Shiloh comes. It is a name for him. Jesus, of course, you know this, he was 33 years old when he died on the cross. Jesus was tempted uh, uh, by Satan, and when he was tempted, he was tempted three times. Uh, the first temptation was worship for the kingdoms, then turn stones into bread and eat, then jump off this cliff into the arms of angels. Three temptations. Watch. Jesus is sold for 30 pieces of silver. He's crucified uh, at the third hour, which is, you know, nine o'clock. Uh, he dies between two thieves on the third cross. There's one on this side of the cross, other on this side of the cross. He's on the cross in the middle. I've already showed you. He's on the third cross in the third hour for 30 pieces of silver. And then he gives his final three words. You want to hear them? Of Jesus. Oh, it's fitting to get by. 
it is finished. These are Jesus' final words on the cross. His final words are these three words. It is finished. The phrase, it is finished, it is only found one other time in the Bible. Would you like to hear what it says about it? I know you would. I just know you would. It's in James 1 and 15. James 1 and 15. Then when lust, watch this, count with me now. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Three things. Watch this. He said, then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And when it is finished, being sin, it bringeth forth death. One, two, three. So here's what I want to teach you now. This is, this is, some, this is some stuff to live by, folks. There are three dimensions of sin. You better write this. There are three dimensions of unholiness, sin. Any sin you commit will fall into three categories. Now, I'm going to swing this to the antithesis, then I'm going to bring it back to God. I'm going to show you how Satan mirrors everything he does. He perverts. But I'm going to show you how the enemy does it. I'm going to show you how God does it by showing you this. It is finished. Let me show you this. There are three categories that every sin falls into. Three. First John 2 and 16. Please, somebody put that scripture in. First John 2 and 16. For all that is in the world is this. The lust of the eye. Excuse me. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eye. And the pride of life. This is all that is in the world. These are the three categories of every sin you or I or anybody else can ever commit. They're going to fall into one of these three categories. Please pay attention. This could save your life. Watch. They are these, John, 1 John 2 and 16. All that's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So, in those three categories, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life, which is a triangle. In those, pointing down, boop, boop, down, there's a point. It's a point. And here's the point. Watch. For instance, lying, arrogance, greed, that's pride. Those sins come under the umbrella of a point called pride. Uh, uh, uh. Pornography, perversion, uh, people obsessed with bloody, gory movies, vampirism, uh, obsessed with, you know, demonic video games. That's a bloodlust. That's the lust of the eyes. They just want to see gore. They want to see fight, fight, fight. They want to see, you know, uh, uh, blood, gore, filth, uh, perversion, pornography. The, if, you, if you do not learn how to counter this, you're going to fall in these traps. Now watch this. So then, then uh, uh, addiction, alcoholism, you know, the list goes on and on with those things. They fall under the umbrella of the lust of the flesh. So let me show this to you again. You can write these down and see where you're struggling and you'll see where the enemy is maybe trying to get in. Every sin you can commit, any stronghold you have in your life, it's going to come under one of those three headings. It's going to be the pride of life, which is arrogance, ego. That's where you get covetous, greed, lying, you know, boastful, proud. It's going to come from the pride of life, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh. Three, these three points now, watch. These three sin categories they are they are like i said they're like a triangle but they show you what you have a propensity to be drawn to when you start grouping these together and watch this and right in the middle of the three is the eyes 
What did I? T what have I been showing you here? Every time you find a three dimension, lust of the eye, or excuse me, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life. Right in the middle of these three is the eyes again. Sight. Call on me and God saying in all these threes, land will appear. Uh, I'll show you great my things. Sight. Lift up your eyes and look. All of this sight. Now, look how it's perverted. Now, Satan's got you spiritually blinded. Now, he's got you looking with these eyes and he's catching you right in the middle of the pride of life and the lust of the flesh is eyes the lust of the eye it shows up again in this three-pronged triangular pointing down that's the way it takes you watch this because these these sins categories jesus conquered it that's why he said the three words it is finished Hebrews 4 and 15. Please stay with me. Hebrews 4 and 15. He said, we have not a high priest, which cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmities, but in all points, not in all sins, all points, was he tempted like us, yet without sin. What does that mean? He was tempted three times. Go look at what he was tempted by. He was tempted by the lust of the flesh, pride of the life, get the kingdoms of the world. You know, he was tempted by pride of life, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh. Eat, you're hungry, eat. That's fleshly temptation. Now watch. Jesus spoke three words to deal with three points. It is finished. He overcome it. He showed you how to overcome it. These three degrees, ladies and gentlemen, these three degrees of sin and debauchery progress into greater depths of depravity. Watch, this will help you a lot. The lust of the eye, then the, or excuse me, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye, then the third degree is worse. It's, it's the worst state of man. It's called the pride of life. Please watch this. Lust of the flesh is bad. Lust of the eye is bad. But when you get to pride, you get into what God hates. When you see this three, it will always deal with sight. It will always deal with revelation. It will always deal with resurrection. Restoration. But when Satan gets a hold to it, it deals with lusting with this other sight. But watch, when you see a three, when you see a three-dimensional, the third is always, if it's bad, the worst. If it's good, the third is always the best. Let me say that again. Let me say that again. Let me show it to you like this. These three degrees of sin progress into greater depths of depravity. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes. Then the third and worst state of man is when he falls into the pride of life. Why? God, let's try this. God resists the, 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 the murderer? No. God resists the liar? No. God resists the homosexual? No. He resists the proud. You see that? God resists the proud. That's the highest level of depravity. God resists the proud, but he gives more grace to the humble. There's more chance for a humble prostitute than it is for a proud preacher. You got me? So God resists the proud. He said, these are the things God hate. A proud look. It's on the list. Now watch, because the three dimensions of sin lead us into greater levels of damnation. Now, I'm going to flip this around. I'm just showing you on the negative connotation what happens. That's why there's three dimensions of salvation. Each lead to greater levels of manifestation. Here's why. Acts 2 and 38, what does it say? Repent, that's one. Be baptized, every one of you. Did you catch that? When he said repent and be baptized, he said Every one of you, meaning no exemption. No, the baptism is not an option. I'm going to show you why. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. That's step two. Then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Notice when he gets to this point, the third point he calls a gift. It, it elevates. Three points of salvation. 
Here's what they do. They counter those three points of damnation. The three points laid out in salvation counter those three points I just laid out in damnation, which are lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life. Well, you've got to uh, 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 counter that with repentance, baptism, gift of the Holy Ghost. Watch this. Repent, that's your voice. Repentance is your voice. Not a priest saying something for you. When you repent, that is your voice. Then be baptized. When you're baptized, now that's the preacher's voice. Why you got a preacher's voice? Because you got to have a second witness. Jesus said in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So you got a witness now when you're baptized in the name of Jesus. Then watch this. You receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the Spirit's voice speaking through you. This is the third and the highest level and the greatest voice. There's your voice. That's good. Repenting. Then there's the preacher's voice, baptizing. That's good, but watch this. Then there's the voice of the Spirit speaking through you. The wind bloweth where it listeth. You hear the sound thereof. Can't tell whence it cometh or whither it goeth. So is everyone born in the Spirit. They're going to make a noise. The wind's going to talk. Watch this. That's showing you something. When he speaks, it's called a gift. <laughs> Listen, the first point, when you speak, that's repentance. That's crucifying the lust of the flesh. That's what you do in repentance. In repentance, you crucify the lust of the flesh. You got to keep repenting. Watch this. Then point two or step two, the preacher speaks at baptism for remission of your sins. It is a decreasing or a reduction of the lust of the eye. When you are baptized, it begins to reverse this thing. It, it, it reduces. Your sin goes into remission. You begin to lessen the effect of your natural eye ability. Watch what happens. Baptism buries you in Christ, bringing a reduction to the seduction. You get a reduction to the seduction by the eyes of lust. Whenever you are baptized, it circumcises it. It causes a division. It does something to you. You don't see things the same when you come through the water and come out. Something appears different. I promise you it does. Just like on the third day, what happened on the third day? They were baptized. The water's baptized. Comes back. See, let dry land appear. It comes out looking different than the way it was under the water. And the Bible likens it. The Bible likens it to baptism, the flood. Now listen, the third point, the third point is when you begin to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives you utterance. When you yield your tongue, you allow him to speak. Now you're countering that last thing, which is the pride of life. So repentance counters the lust of the flesh. Baptism counters the lust of the eye. That's the great revelation that most people can't see is the baptism in the name of Jesus. They can see repentance in the Holy Ghost and they can't see baptism in the name of Jesus. Why? That's the eye. That is the revelation realm. That's where when you can see what's happening there in baptism, you can see in the water. And so let me back up. Repentance, you deal with the lust of the flesh. Baptism, you deal with the lust of the eye. But in the receiving of the Holy Ghost, you speak in tongues, and now you take your pride down. You let the Spirit speak. That symbolizes humility. You have to be in a place of humility. Take yourself down from pride to hear yourself talk and let the Holy Spirit talk. If you follow Satan's three-step program, you'll think you're going higher. They call it getting high. Yeah, you're going to get high. He's going to bring you up high. He'll lead you into greater levels of sin and blindness from the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. And finally, the pride of life kicks in, the third step, and he'll cut you down to the ground. You'll start by going up, and he'll bring you twice as far down to the third level. The Bible said, Pride going before destruction, a Holy Spirit before a fall. When you follow Jesus, however, his three-step program looks different. He takes you down twice. First you go down to repentance, then you go 
down in water to baptism, but eventually the Holy Ghost comes in and he raises you up to live a resurrected life. The way up is going down. And the way down is trying to lift your own self up. If you humble yourself, you will be exalted, the Bible said. But if you exalt yourself, you will be humble. Satan says, lift yourself up. Because he knows if you will lift yourself up, it will take you down. But God says, take yourself down to repentance and take yourself down to the watery grave. Why? Because my spirit will meet you there and it will resurrect you and bring you up. Either way, the third step is the greatest. Somebody type that. I'm getting ready to pray for you. Either way it goes, whether negatively or positively, the third step is the greatest. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is where destruction comes in. The Bible said pride goes before destruction. Guess what? Same way in the reverse order on the positive side. Repentance, baptism, Holy Ghost. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes. You shall receive destruction after pride comes. That's when you lift yourself up. But you shall receive the power after the Holy Ghost comes. That's when you put yourself down. The third step in the wrong direction leads to pain and destruction. The third step in the right direction leads to power and reconstruction. So hear me well. So I'm getting ready to pray for you here. The third step in any direction reveals the reward. You get too far stepped off about the third step, you find out. Because David found out uh, after the third battle come his promotion. So here's what God says. I'm, I'm going to save some of this for next week. Exodus 19 and 11. Be ready against the third day. For the third day, the Lord will come down. You're not ready for this, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. In the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. How can, how, how can Ray Charles can see this? I mean, here we are again. Be ready. The third day. I told you when we started. Three has a deal with sight, vision, revelation. Sight, 333 times in the Bible. It's in the 333rd verse. It's in the 333rd chapter. It's, you know, I mean, over and over. Now, he says, be ready on the third day. For in the third day, the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people. He's coming on that third day. I got a lot more to do, but I got to pray for you tonight. I'm going to pick it up here next week, and we're going to launch into something very powerful. I just want to pray for you. I think I have my uh, internet working better here where I'm able to make sure everybody's still hanging in here with me. I hope you're ready tonight. God's about to do something mighty and wonderful for you. Let me refresh this page, and we're going to begin to just ask the Lord to work a work. I definitely want you to go visit my, uh, my, my page. I want you to go visit uh, Robin Johnson Prophetic Ministries. We're going to pray. We're going to ask God to touch you. I, I feel like today God wants to fill people with the Holy Ghost tonight. I felt like this in prayer that God wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost. You're watching me tonight. You want the Holy Ghost, you're going to get the Holy Ghost. We've had a bunch of people get the Holy Ghost this week. I think we're up now to 178 or something received it so far this year. God's filling people with the Holy Ghost. You repent. You humble yourself. When we start praying, you let him in. He wants to come in. Let me see if I can uh, see if you guys are still with me. And I want God to just pour out the Holy Ghost tonight. I'm going to pray for your needs. I'm going to ask God to touch you, heal you, bind you up, do wonderful and mighty things. But I just feel like tonight that uh, and I'm unable to see you here, but I froze up. But at any rate, you're on here. Would you just lift your hands with me? Let's lift our hands up to the Lord all over our houses, wherever you're at, wherever you're sitting. We're going to ask God to strengthen us. I'm going to ask God to talk to us. We're going to ask you, Lord, we don't know what to say. We don't know what to do. Who are we? What is man that you're mindful of us? 
I feel like telling somebody God's about to reveal some things to you. God is about to show you some things. The spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation is in the earth right now. The spirit of God is going to come into your house. Let me speak some words to you right now. Let me speak a word to you. The person that you're praying for, they can't see baptism. They can't see your doctrine. They can't see your, your stuff. I mean, you're trying to explain it to them and tell it to them and they're not getting it. But let me tell you something. You may not be able to speak it to them and explain it to them, but God is going to let you impart something to them without even speaking a word. This is what happens in prophetic prayer. Somebody, you're living in the house with somebody. I'll hear from you as I hear from many people. All these people getting financial miracles, I'm going to read some to you. But you're living in the house with somebody who doesn't have your beliefs. They don't see it the way you see it. They don't understand it. They don't get it. You watching the news and you saying, oh, that's this. And they saying, conspiracy theory. They're not getting it. It's going over their head. Listen to me. Don't argue with them. Don't start a fight. Don't make things ten times worse. I'm going to tell you what to do. Instead of letting them hear you argue and fight, I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm going to give you a word. Go in that back bedroom and kneel down and let them hear you praying. Go in that room when that thing starts trying to rear its head against you. And I, I see this going on right now. I see a lady that's happening to you. I see a man this is going on with you and, and, and your, your marriage has been on the rocks. Your marriage has been on rocks and, and I'm probably not helping things better. And everything going on in the world is got, because Jesus is coming to bring a sword. But I'm going to tell you I'm going to tell you something. Don't go tell them Robin Johnson said. Don't even go tell them the Bible said. And you got, don't get them offended. Uh, a brother offended is harder to win than a city without walls. Listen, you, 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 you don't have a leg to stand on if you get a person mad. I'm talking, I, I see this in marriages and homes right now. I'm just feeling this in my spirit. I got a word for you. Quit arguing. I see you with a remote control and, and, and it's like something going on and you're, you're having a, a TV argument about something, whether it's news or something. And this is reoccurring stuff. And, 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 and you see it and you're right. Let me, let me help you feel good. You're right. Yeah, you're right. But you're not going about your right righteously. You got to go about right with a right attitude. I'm going to tell you what to do. The next time when you see that coming, go to your prayer place. What that man needs to hear, what that lady needs to hear from you is you in there on your face before God. You can pray things through that you can't beat out. You can pray things through that you can't argue out. You can pray things into people that you cannot convince people of. You can pray. Nothing is more powerful in your house. Your greatest influence, you must believe, is when you got a prayer place and say, look, I love you. Kiss them on the head and say, I love you. I love you. If it's your, your child and whoever it is, say, look, I love you. But I, I, I'm not arguing with you. I'm going to go worship the Lord. And, and no, don't go in there and say, God, touch my aggravating husband. Don't say that. Go in there and say, God, I just worship you right now. Just love on him. Go in there and love him. Don't make it like you and God are against your husband. I feel the Holy Ghost. Don't make it like you and God are against your wife. Jesus. Jesus. I feel this right now, folks. Some of you are having this. <laughs> Bad thing is, some of y'all having this, and the person you having it with is listening now too. And God wants it to be that way. Listen, Jesus. the only person that's right is Jesus, man. He's the only person that's really going to be right in the end of this thing. It's going to be him. We're going to have things we're wrong about. But I feel like telling you right now, if you'll raise your hands up and say, hey, it's no use. We're not going to come apart. We're coming together. I see a home coming back together. I see a home coming back together.
I see a home coming back together right now. Jesus. Outside of that, I see another marriage that's been ravished with infidelity. Maybe not uh, all of you, and there are some, that maybe not all of you uh, uh, in, in the fullest extent of that word, but there's just been some things that have been misleading, misled, breaking. Let me tell you, integrity is coming back to your house. Trust, I hear the Lord, trust is going to be reborn. Trust in a man and a woman. Let me tell you, if you don't have trust, you don't have nothing. But when you can trust, when you, listen, when you know that you got that one person you can call. I know right now, nothing, I can call Lisa Johnson right now and say, baby, whatever. I, and she knows the same way with me. If you are having to turn to somebody else, oh God, have mercy on you. God is going to restore trust in your home. I feel this in homes and marriages right now. I feel this in relationships right now. I feel it. I see a young lady too. You're not, uh, you're like dark complected. I can't tell if you're Latino. Because you're dark complected. And anyway, I see you in a relationship. And it has been very trying on you. It, 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 it's been a thing. You like, God, am I doing the right thing here or not? I see you. You, 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 you. You're not African American. You're not white. But I can see your uh, uh, silhouette here. And I want to tell you something. God is about to deliver you. You ask God to show you. <laughs> You ask God to show you what to do. And now here, you're going to hear it. And you on here listening to me right now live, or you're going to be catching me later tonight. And I hear from people all through the week. But listen to me, lady. You ask God to show you. Now God's showing you. Don't go make a stupid mistake. Don't go get yourself in trouble and get your whole family messed up. You put Jesus first. You ask God to show you. Now roll with what he's showing you right now. Don't be unequally yoked together as with believer and unbeliever. If you're not careful, you're going to get tied up into something. The devil's trying to snag you. The devil's trying to put you in something. I tell people all the time, you better marry the right woman. You better find the right man because when you get them, you ain't going to change them. You better make sure God lines you up, puts you with the right person. I'm praying this. I feel this on somebody. You message me right now. If you got the guts, you probably don't. Put it on Facebook on this right now. Say, hey, that's me. Pray for me and we will. These people will. I can't see you. But what I am saying to you right now is that God is telling you, run while you can. Move while you can. While there's light in the third day, open up your eyes and look and see what's ahead of you. Let's pray for all the cases of, 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 of COVID coronavirus that are in your families. It's touching so many people right now. I want to pray for God to put a spirit of healing on us for it. But if you have people in your family right now, whether in the hospital or in your home or whatever, I, I understand some of you got people that you don't want to say nothing because you don't want to go to the hospital because if you go to the hospital, there's a chance it gets worse when you go. But you got people at home suffering, and I understand if you don't want to put this on media, but I want to pray for you right now. I want to speak healing over you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just speak healing over these people. I speak over the man that I see right now, God, in the hospital with COVID. I see an old, older man, somewhat receding hair, whitish on the side. He's got COVID. He's in the hospital. I'm praying for him right now. If you know who he is, Put the name on here if you don't understand uh, about your privacy. But I see a man in a hospital right now. They got like a mask on him. And this man has got COVID. And if God don't undertake, this man won't come out. He's kind of receding hair here. His hair I see is white right through the front. I see him laying in the bed in the hospital. And we need God to go touch that man right now. If you know who he is, put his name. And these people will pray. But I'm just going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray that you would heal those that have corona tonight. Some of you that have had corona, you're watching us right now. You've had it and you've not got your strength back. 
You, you, you don't have the body age. You don't have it, but now you just can't get your strength back. I'm praying strength into your body right now by the name of Jesus. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost moving with us right now. Let's stretch your hands to mine right now. Let's just pray in a point of agreement. Father, in the name of Jesus, by your stripes we're healed. I speak healing into that body of that man watching me. I speak healing in the body of that lady that's watching me right now. Somebody, you have been in an accident, and that's been a while back, and you got like some whiplash, and you've been jaw, and, and something's come back. It's like you were better, and now you come back. It's got, it stems from an accident, and, and, and there's other uh, complications with it. I'm just saying, because I could be speaking to many people, and I don't want you to think that it can't be you, but I see somebody in an accident, and God is a healer. If you've been in an accident, you're having a problem, and your neck, whiplash, something in your back, uh, your hip, all of that to be healed right now in the name of Jesus. You shall be healed. You will be healed. I declare the word of faith to you right now that your body shall line up with the word of God and you shall be made whole. I tell it, Micaiah. Stand up right now when you're watching me and say I'm healed. Do what I'm telling you to do. Stand up and say I'm healed right now. Whatever the pain is, I see a catch. I'm seeing these catches and these tweaks and stuff. I pray healing over you right now. What you got that's like a, a swelling, the swelling in your hand, your extremities, come out of you right now in the name of Jesus. Kida, your hand's so swollen, you can't hold it, make fist, but let it decrease right now. By the name of Jesus, let there be a reduction. I speak over your finances. I spoke over some other night, and they said, yeah, that's right. And it worked out about a house and a loan and a mortgage and somebody else with a car. And I'm going to speak over your financial dilemma right now, and I'm going to tell you. I spoke over people this last week about businesses, and suddenly they have got contracts and everything else. Why? God's that good. God's concerned about you. Whatever your career move is in the middle of this pandemic, I declare you shall reap 100-fold. You shall not lose anymore. You shall begin to gain. You shall begin to go ahead. I loosen upon you the windows of heaven to be opened in the name of Jesus. It shall fall upon you. He shall pour blessing upon you. Your storehouse shall be blessed in the city, in the field, your business, your career. Somebody's worried about your job. You're worried about your husband's job. You're worried about his job like they may uh, fire him or they may discontinue that job. Let me tell you something. He can't lose that job until God's got him another job. You agree with him right now. You pray over your husband right now. You're not going to lose that job until God's got another. I hear God say, before that door can be closed and you suspect it, you feel it, you know it's going to happen. God said, before that door can be closed, I will already have another door to be open. <laughs> say Jesus. 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 Come on, folks. I feel it. You need to be at POA tomorrow night. We're going to do this and a lot more of this. I wish I could get to you right now and lay hands on you. I'm being as specific as I can and yet as general as I can because I know God's touching a lot of people. Whatever your need is right now, I want you just to do this with me right now. Put your hands up and I'm praying healing over you, over the person that you're standing. There's somebody watching me and you're in the gap for somebody else. And, and you, you, I feel like you're, 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 you're just here, you're interceding tonight. And you're needing me to pray and us to pray. And it's not just me. You got a couple hundred people on here to pray right now. One chase a thousand, two ten thousand. What can two hundred do? Ain't no telling what we can do. But we can get you healed by Jesus' name. You're standing in the gap for somebody. For their soul, for their life, for their body, for their mind, their well-being. You're in the gap. We agree with you right now that the angel of the Lord shall be dispatched. You're about to get a good report. A good word is coming. A good word is coming. Can I tell you this? Revelation's coming. God's about to reveal you. The third day is coming here. There's a revelation coming on your life. He cut my shadow. The power of the name of Jesus. Are you ready? Here's the main thing I want to pray. I pray your spiritual eyes to be opened. This is what I'm praying, You're, that you don't need me to prophesy to you. God's going to open up your ear. The third day revelation of sight and appearance. People are going to see. You're going to speak and they're going to say, man, I need to be baptized. The people are going to see the need to be saved, to repent, to receive the Holy Ghost. When you start speaking, why? Because your eyes come open and you can impart an eye-opening experience to somebody else. You can't give what you don't have. 
And I'm going to tell you, I'm giving praise to God when I'm saying, you know me, I do not take glory. I receive honor, but I don't take glory. The glory and the worship and the credit belongs to Jesus and him alone. But I know this much, my eyes are open, my ears are open, and my mouth is open, and my heart is full today. And what I want to say to you is such as I have, give I unto thee. I unlock the gifts of the Spirit inside of you. A young man watching me right now. You want this so bad. You are so hungry for this. You don't have nobody around you that preaches it or talks about it. Listen, you don't need that. You just hear what I'm telling you right now. I'm imparting it to you. Your hunger will open something up. Faith will leave where I'm at and going to go right to you. And you'll have a dream in the next seven days. You'll have a visitation in your home that suddenly in your spirit you're going to see things you never saw. Man, I feel a prayer mantle. I feel some of you ladies with a prayer mantle on you right now. I feel a prayer mantle coming up on you. The angels of God are going to visit with us. I feel a good thing coming, folks. I feel a powerful thing. The king is here. Where the word of the king is, there's power. I unlock you. I release you by the authority of the name of Jesus. It's 1111. It's 1111. That's a prophetic number. That's a dividing number. Two numbers. That means taking away the false prophetic and bringing in the real prophetic. Some of you have been harmed and hurt by false prophets and false gifts and people that pretended trying to control you. It's a Jezebel spirit. It's a, it, it's a spirit that is almost clairvoyant. You can almost know things. It's demonic. It's a familiar spirit. It's sent to raid, destroy, control, manipulate your life. And somebody come in and used a false gift, messed you up. But let me tell you something. God has a real for every fake. It's 1111. The false is being removed. Judas is being removed. But Joseph is being revealed. That's the 11th son. That's the prophetic son. That's the coat of many colors. God's going to wrap a coat of many colors around you. I pray over you right now. You'll be healed from the church hurt. You'll be healed from the thing that happened to you. Hold on, Abbasata. I pray over your ministry. I pray over your home, your family, your finances. I speak it right now. And this is what I want you to do now. It's 11, 12. 12 is definitely a prophetic number. Listen to me. I need you to people. I, I spoke to somebody the other day, and before I could give them a word, they come back and said, my God, my bank account's got $2,000 in it. Somebody else said, I give you some money and it come back because my bank account busted. Said, I'll be, something happened and we got $1,000 deposit in my account. I mean, it's amazing how when you give, what happens. So let me tell you something right now. If you'll get on here and give tonight, we want you to give. We want you to give because God has showed me. Give these people an opportunity to sow into the ministry. Give these people, and it's a hard thing for me to do, and I don't like talking about money, but I'm, I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about sowing in and supporting us. This is what I did. I stayed around here tonight. You sow into this. We are seeing people filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name, healed, delivered, set free. You know what we're preaching, and we're bringing these little videos to you, and I got some powerful stuff that I'm going to be revealing these next couple of weeks. But you hear me, if you'll go give to us tonight, whatever God's, if he's not talking to you, you don't worry about it. I'm talking to people that are hearing from God through this. Your eyes will be, are your eyes coming open? Are you hearing something like, I, I never heard that before. I, I, there's some of you that are watching me and you watch like, you're like, now I've never heard that. And, it, and things are clicking, the buttons are going. If that's you, I want you to ask God what to do if it's, $555. I see people send me. Look, the Lord told me to give you $111. God told me to give you $333. Whatever that is. If it's $100, $200, if it's $1,000, it doesn't matter. What matters is you obey God. And don't be offended if I'm not talking to you. I am trying to help people show you how you hear from God. Is when God tells you to do this, it's the same voice that says $100. $300. That voice that says $500, that's the same voice that's going to tell you, speak to that lady, she's having a back problem. Speak to that man, he's got camp. It's the same word, same voice. So here's what I want you to do. My wife's going to put it on. Go to PayPal. We've now got Cash App. 
what do we have, darling? We got Zelle, Facebook payments, Messenger. She'll put my email on there, revmano at al.com. You can do cash app, all that. Here's what I want you to know. At 12 o'clock tonight is my prayer time. At 12 o'clock tonight, I'm going to be praying for you. I'm going to look on here and all the cash app, all the PayPal, whatever it is. I'm, me and my wife, we call your name to God. That's the deal. You're not buying a miracle. You're not being gimmicked. I don't like gimmicks. We're not gimmicking. We're sowing and you're reaping. And the benefit is this. When you sow, I'm holding it up and I say, God, pour it out. Press down, shake him together, and I'll call your name. John Smith, touch him. Touch Sally, touch him. In the name of Jesus, press down. I call your name, shaking together, running over. Let them be healed of all diseases. Let the anointing be on their life. Break chains, break shackles. Let their kids come home. Let prodigals come home. That's how we pray for you, and we call your name. I want you to do it tonight. If you'll go do it now at 12 o'clock, which is coming up, I'm going to pray for you. Oh, I love y'all. Thank y'all for sticking with me tonight. I'm praying for all you in the wake of the storm, Houston, uh, 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 Lake Charles. I've been praying for you guys. I'm praying for you. My God, I love you. I'm going to see if I can find you here one more time. I want you to go give tonight. Lisa's dropping it in there right now. I love you guys. I hope I get to see you tomorrow night at POA. If you sow and give tonight, we're going to pray for you. There it is, Lisa, just drop it. I love you, Jacqueline Virtue. I'm going to see you tomorrow night. You help me preach. I'm coming home. We're just going to have church. Bless you. Jesus, Jesus. Stacy Fowler, Lord bless you. Judy Caraway Masters. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. I appreciate you too. Uh, Shannon Lee Hickman Story. Dale Stogner, it's good to see you on here tonight, my brother. I appreciate you. I'm praying for your mama. Courtney, I pray for your mother, baby, in Jesus' name. We love you guys. I got some powerful stuff. I appreciate you, uh, Miranda. I love you. Whitney Davis, I love you. Kyle, thank y'all for coming uh, to Revival, supporting us. Appreciate you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Josh James, appreciate you, buddy. Thank you for sticking with us. Thank you. I don't know if it will be or not. God bless you, Judy. God bless you, Melanie. Uh, Shannon, I love you. Praying for you. Praying for you, Amber and Linda Jenkins. Angie Williams. Praying for you, lady. Praying for your ministry and what you're doing over there. I'm headed to the East Coast here very soon. Bless you, Amanda. Praying for you, girl. Frank. Serena. Thank you for sowing. Thank you for your giving. That's why I'm going to keep on doing it. You guys promised that you would support it. Your cousin is on from New York. Well, I'm glad about it. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're with us. God's doing a thing. God's connecting people. God's doing a very powerful prophetic thing. Sarah, uh, Shay, I love you guys. Dennis Smith, I love you. You guys go give me and Lisa. I promise you we're going to pray for you tonight. We appreciate you so much. Fifi, I love you. Thank y'all. Thank you guys for sticking around. I hope, I hope you're blessed tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you guys. I love y'all. We're pioneers. It's the tip of the spear. Keep pressing on. Press on. You might be the only person in your family living for God. You're a pioneer. You're going ahead of everybody else. That's what an apostle is. That's what the apostolic is. The Father goes before us, but there's a line coming behind us. Thank y'all. Thank you for your giving. We need it right now in this season. We declare it. Hallelujah. You're a pioneer. You're a pioneer. You're a pioneer. You can't stay here. Only the Father. My Jesus. Who goes before you to your own front.
Your own frontier. I'll speak faith over you. God love you. Receive you the Holy Ghost. You received it tonight. Let me know if you're speaking in tongues. I'm going to just stay here a minute. Open your mouth. Let God fill you with the Holy Ghost. Right now. But your Father in heaven. Jesus, bless these people tonight. God. Pour your spirit out. Let me hear from you. You received a word tonight. Let me hear from you. You've been encouraged tonight. Let me hear from you. You're a pioneer. Jesus, I love you so much. Don't you give up. Press on. Jesus. Go give. I'll be praying for you. I love y'all. Thank you. Tomorrow night. Keep on pressing through There's a wilderness path